Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Pastor Paul Adal here in the Philippines. Uh, I would just like to thank the Lord for this opportunity to share to you the word of the Lord concerning living a life of faith. This message is very close to my heart. And I believe that uh, our journey as uh, followers and disciples of Jesus it's a journey of from fear to faith. You know, it's a, a journey from bondage to freedom. From a place of anxiety to a place of peace. From a place of brokenness to wholeness. That's our journey. And uh, for today, I would just like to focus on uh, faith. As a, as a lifestyle, as a journey, and I pray that the Lord will use this uh, sharing uh, to enlighten us. Yeah, just like uh, what I've mentioned, uh, our Christian life is a journey of faith. In fact, uh, it's all by faith and it's all by grace. So it's, it's not just... Uh, about what we can do or what we can have or how much uh, knowledge we have. Uh, our relationship with God, with His Word, with His Holy Spirit is all by faith. You know? As Paul said, that we walk not by sight, we walk by faith and not by sight. Um, living a life of faith is a crucial in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 1 says, verse 1 and verse 2, I'm reading from NIV, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Um, just in that verse, we see what faith is, the definition of faith. So faith is confidence. Faith is trust. It is believing. It is uh, putting all of our trust in Him. Confidence in what we hope for. His promises. Who God is. And it is also assurance of things not seen. And uh, later on we will understand that the things that are not unseen are eternal things. You know? It's not what we can see in our sight with our eyes that will assure us uh, whether uh, God is with us or God has been good to us. You know, whether there's there's no answer yet to our prayer, God remains good. God remains true to His promises. So our faith, our belief should be anchored, you know, connected to things that are eternal, not things here on earth not changing things that, like material things, money, uh, position, health, uh, friends. It should be anchored, rooted in eternal things, things that are not seen. And in verse 2, it says here, this is what the ancients were commended for. So it is faith that uh, makes uh, the... Uh, heroes of faith, Hebrews 11, which is the heroes of faith, they are approved before the Lord. How? It's because they believe. They believe in God. They believe in the promises of God. They hold on to the promises of God. Uh, no matter what happens, some experience the fruits of their faith. It, uh, it came to pass. But most of them did not, did not see the answers to their faith, to their uh, belief, to what they have been praying for, what they have fought for, yet they remain in faith, believing in the Lord. So they were commended, they were approved. In the same way, life of faith is crucial in our channel. You know, we are uh, approved by God in our leadership, in our worship, in 
and everything. Our service before the Lord, serving the church, if we do it by faith. Not by feelings, not just by our own strength, not just by our own understanding, but believing in who God is, believing in His promises, believing in His Word, believing that He is there. So when we worship, when we serve, when we preach, lead in prayer, make sure it is all by faith. So uh, in, in Hebrews 11, we will see from verse uh, 3 down to the last verse, we will see you know, stories of uh, different individuals who demonstrated faith. You know, uh, like for example, verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. So we know that the brothers, the, uh, Cain and Abel. Abel gave the best offering to the Lord, chose the best animal. But for Cain, he just get vegetables around. And so Abel did it by faith. Cain did it just by compliance. Oh, let me just do this haphazardly. So in our worship to the Lord, make sure it is rooted in faith. Because we know He is holy. We know He is good. We know He deserves all worship. So we will give our best. That's the worship that is with faith. Seasoned with faith. If it's just compliance, if it's just compulsion, you're forced, it will be similar to Cain. So it is not special. It becomes ritual. It becomes, you know, uh, the heart is not there. Uh, so Cain, his offering was not acceptable. Why? Because it was not done by faith. And uh, also in verse 5, it's about Enoch by faith. Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. You know, our word for that is he's been raptured. <laughs> he could not be found because God had taken him away. And for before he was taken, he was commended again, approved. Commended by God. God was saying, this is amazing. I like what you're doing, Enoch. Okay? Just like Abel's worship, offering before the Lord. God was saying, I like that. That's, that's what I like. So he commended uh, Abel's worship. Now, Enoch's life of walking with God. You know, he was commended as the one who pleased God. So he was taken he was, uh, the Lord said, come here, Enoch, be with me. So Enoch commanded not because of his strength, not because of his uh, intelligence or riches or influence. He was commanded by God because of his faith. And his faith was demonstrated in this, even though the world around him was unrighteous. There's so much sin all around, but he remained walking with God. He stayed in intimacy. He walked with God, just like similar to, you know, in Eden, uh, when there was a Garden of Eden, everything was perfect. God would walk every day in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. So although this is outside of Eden, because men and women, Adam and Eve, were, you know, uh, they, they had to leave Eden because of sin. Uh, but Enoch demonstrated. Nevertheless, he still walked with God in the midst of a fallen man. So here, this is a beautiful uh, facet of, of what faith looks like. It can be seen in our worship our offering, our sacrifice. Faith is about lifestyle, relationship with the Lord, the day-to-day, -day, and not just, the, not just the day, but years of walking. 365 
uh, years, I guess, <laughs> for Enoch. He just, wow, he walked with God. That's so amazing, walk with God. And in verse 6, this is familiar verse, and I, I just want to uh, remind that, us of this. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, it's coming from Enoch's story. So that's the follow through of verse 6. And we always quote this memory verse for most of us. It says here, I'll, I'll, I'll read it again, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Okay, two things about this. Uh, scripture, this verse. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that's very clear. You know, you can have your sacrifice, you can dress up, you can prepare, you can read uh, tons of books or memorize verses, you can uh, serve people. But if you're doing it not out of faith or without faith, it's not pleasing before the Lord. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when we pray, don't doubt. When we ask the Lord, don't put doubt. Just believe. You know, when will He answer it? It's up to Him. But faith says, I believe in you. I believe you know all things. I believe you are in control. I believe that it is your promise that we will call you Father and that we will ask of you our daily bread. And therefore, Lord, I come before you and pray just like a child. My Father, provide. My Father, I pray for breakthrough. My Father, guide me on this. So faith is connected to a um, secured reality it stands on the reality that he is god and that he is faithful to his promises remember that in verse 6 that because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists that he is god that he is eternal that he knows everything that he is our father he is our savior our source you know, that He is God. He's not human. He's not just mere man. He is God. So when we pray, we're not praying to just a mere human. We're praying to our Father who art in heaven. So our faith is anchored, rooted, grounded in this. He is God. Number two, He is a faithful rewarder of those who diligently seek. So it's not just seeking one time. It's diligently, ongoing relationship, in different seasons of life, breakthrough or breakdown, or waiting or pressing in, or abundance or lack, or in your weakness or in your time of strength. How do we know that we are diligent? We keep, we keep on believing. We keep on holding on to Him. We entrust everything to Him. That is diligently seeking. Trusting in the Lord with all of our hearts. Leaning not on our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledging Him. That's living by faith. That's uh, <coughs> Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6. Allowing God to be our source. Allowing God to be our, the one who will sustain us making God the one who will receive all the glory. That's a life of faith. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about you. you know? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And as we come to Him, believe these two things. He is God, number two, that His word is true. That what He promised, He will do. You know? And there is reward for this. At this point, I, I just want to shift gear. Uh, as I've mentioned early on, 
our Christian life is a journey from fear to faith, you know, maturity of faith. And the goal of Christianity is not just to be blessed. The goal of Christianity is not just to be saved and secure. The goal of us following Jesus, carrying up our cross and denying ourselves is this, that we will become just like Jesus. So the goal of discipleship is Christ-likeness. So the goal of our faith, the end point of our faith is to have and possess and grow to have a faith just like Jesus. So we, I believe we go through stages of faith as we grow in the Lord. And that's what I want to share to you today. Uh, the three levels of faith. So a while ago, I gave you a definition of faith. Faith is confidence. Faith is trust. It's believing, it is uh, holding on to God and to His promises. It is uh, uh, confidence and assurance to things that are not seen, to God, to His Word, to eternal things. That is faith. You know? uh, it, one picture of faith is, is trust. Trust is like a baby in the arms of a mother. There could be traffic in Jakarta, chaos, many people in the mall, for example, the baby is at rest, quiet, restful, secured. That is trust, throwing ourselves in the arms of God. That is faith. That's one side of faith. But faith is also active. It's like, okay, Lord, you promised this. Lord, I press in. I believe in you. I believe in you for healing. I believe in you for provision. That's another side of faith. And faith is also risking. You know, it's like uh, Peter walking on the water, stepping outside of his boat, of the boat, and walking on water. That is faith. You know, Jesus said, come to me. And he started walking. Uh I want us to explore these three stages of faith. This is a life of faith, a lifestyle of faith. We go through three stages of faith. Number one, it is a religious faith. It is principle-based faith. What God said, I'll do it, then I'll have the blessings. I'll have the fruits. I'll have the bread. For example, Lord, if uh, it's it's promised in the word that if I give my first fruits, if I give my tithes and offerings, you know, we always quote Malachi chapter three, and that uh, the, the Lord will pour out His blessing, and and that could be the usual understanding, and that is that is great, you know, uh, we. We hold on to the promises and the principles of the word of the Lord. And it's it's our guidance. It is our uh, security. That's the first level of faith. And when we first come to know the Lord, you know, we we experience that. You know, oh, wow, we pray and a few days down the road, we see the answers to our prayer. We hold on to this promise. We give. We and, the, and then we see the multiplication, how the Lord bless us, and we start gaining understanding. We connect this promise to this breakthrough, and, and uh, that creates faith for more. You know, so we grow in faith. And, but, but let me say this, that's just the first stage of faith, uh, which is, that's great, but that's not the end of it. Our goal is to have a faith just like Jesus, to grow in faith like Jesus. So, um, again, the first level is a religious faith. You know, 
It's like Job offering up to the Lord sacrifices and he made mention of, you know, the, uh, how his, his faithfulness, his righteousness of how he kept uh, himself uh, righteous before the Lord and, and how the Lord has blessed him. Then until something happens to him. And that's the second level of faith. Sometimes our faith, you know, whether uh, we press in, we prophesy, we have prophetic words spoken to us, but sometimes it looks like the opposite, you know? It's a faith out of desperation when our prayers no longer work. Uh, where is that in the scripture? Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, now we can read Mark chapter 9, beginning verse 14. So let me just read it, and then afterwards we go to this. This is a, a faith born out of desperation, you know, born out of great need or pain, born out of, Lord, I have prayed so much, but Lord, there's no fruit. So it's not just holding on to the principle, but this is another level of faith, no matter what. So this is desperation. Okay, let's, let's read verse 14. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. So his son couldn't speak. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I ask your disciples to cast it out and they were not able. So this father is so desperate. His son, you know, he is mute. And when the devil, the spirit comes to him, he grinds his teeth, he throws him down, he foams. He is, the father is so desperate. If you're a parent and you're seeing this as a situation of your child, uh, it it will be so painful. It will be, you know, in your heart. You're in a place of desperation. But why? Because the disciples of Jesus, you're hoping that they could give you the answer, that they could heal your son. And now they couldn't, you know, the very disciples of Jesus. And take note before we continue, uh, the verses... Before this text was when Jesus went together with his disciples, Peter, James, and John, went to the mountain and Jesus was transfigured. It was the Mount of Transfiguration. So they saw Jesus in glory. They, they could have been, wow, walking in so much confidence and power and authority. But here comes the disciples. They could, they could not cast out the demon and the father was so desperate so let's look at this kind of faith so it's no longer just holding on to a promise it's no longer just okay i memorized the verse it's no longer just like an atm kind of faith you know he in the number uh press in and put your your uh, uh atm card and then you'll get the money You'll get that. This time, it's not coming out. It's just desperation. Zero after zero after zero. It's similar to the fate of the bleeding woman. She was so desperate. Nothing was working. She was dying. And her money is just lost. Uh, moving from one doctor to another. 12 years of bleeding. She's full of pain, hurt, uh, discouragement, name it, she was desperate. And this father was desperate. Let's let's pick up the story. So the disciples, your disciples 
were not able. Verse 19, And when he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. So Jesus was really furious here. He rebuked his disciples. And look at that. How did Jesus say it? He said, O faithless generation. The one who was with him uh, on the mountain and the ones who were with him when he did signs and wonders and miracles, they were sent out and people were getting getting uh, healed, delivered, saved. And now they couldn't cast out uh, this demon from the boy. And so Jesus gave this in a clear rebuke, but at the same time, an eye-opener. It's a faith issue. Oh, faithless generation, he said in another um, gospel. I think it's in, in Matthew. He said, oh, uh, adulterous generation. Oh, you mix your faith with something, maybe fear, maybe doubt, maybe unbelief. That is adulterated faith. And it cannot work. It cannot release the power of God when our faith is mixed with something else that is not from the Lord. So let's continue. In verse uh, 19, And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. Verse 20, And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground, rolled about, foaming at the mouth. So just imagine, that's the description of the father. And now, full-blown uh, manifestation. <laughs> it's happening again. Just imagine the emotion of the father, the desperation. And just imagine also the, the, the disciples were recently just rebuked by Jesus. All, all of this mix of emotions, of faithlessness or lack of faith, and then a desperate faith of the father. So to live a life of faith, the starting point is that learn the principles of the word, obey, keep it, and follow it, you know, do it by faith. That's the first step, religious faith. But there's a level in our life we come and we get stories or news like, oh, yeah, there was an accident or you get a, a diagnosis, second stage cancer. You move from just holding on to a principle that you memorize and that you hear preachers preach to that posture of desperation. I have no one to go to. I have no one to help me but you alone. That's desperation. Faith born out of desperation. And we will go through that as well. Uh, so it's not just... Uh, if you do this, I'll have the blessing. If you obey, then we'll break through. But we will learn as we move on in life. Sometimes we can keep this principle, keep the commandments, yet still something happens that pushes us into desperation. But the third level of faith is not just the desperation. It's the faith that takes us to a place of surrender. And that's the faith of Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he was struggling. He was praying. You know, a blood came out of his forehead, a sweat. It was an intense wrestling in his heart. Father, if it is possible, Take this cup of suffering. Take this. As a human being, Jesus knew the pain that he will go through. He knew the suffering. 
He said, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. And then he said, but not my will, yours be done. That's the kind of faith in as we mature in following Jesus. It's that place we surrender everything. And when we get to that level of faith, and uh, we see that for uh, those who follow the Lord for years, like years, they've been through a lot of uh, death, resurrection, death, resurrection, a uh, series of rejection. For, they learn how to forgive, to let go of offense, to love on people. They've been faithful, but they've been rejected and all of that. And just like Joseph going through the process of life, you know, the illustration actually is like Joseph. You know, he will have breakthrough and then breakdown, breakthrough and then breakdown, breakthrough and then breakdown. Actually, when you put everything as God's will, uh, it, it, all throughout of that, it becomes like a crown, you know. <laughs> so that's our life. Uh, those who have move progress to this third level of faith they learn how to surrender they learn how that you know they are not in control and they live lives of peace and they're not anxious they're not you know uh fearful they are rooted and grounded in love experience God's nearness and they are satisfied they are secured we're not alone why because we are in Christ Christ is in us and we are one family running this race today. God bless us all let me pray Lord thank you for your word I pray that this word brings confidence lord grow our faith in a whole new level lord, from just mere naming and claiming just holding on to principles and ex expecting the answers to move to a place of desperation a place of really crying out with boldness and desperation the bleeding woman Father, Lord, asking for healing from us. And even more than that, may we be just like Jesus. We'll say, not our will, but your will be done. Lord, keep us. Keep us in this faith that Jesus offered and that he will be the one to finish. Bless my brothers and sisters with your presence, Lord. Give them breakthrough that will glorify you. Breakthrough that takes them to maturity. Breakthrough that others will follow them because they see Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. See you soon. Bye-bye.